Welcome to the Necronama.com, where we're spending all of October looking at 31 episodes of The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Today, we're looking at Treehouse 22 from October 30th, 2011. This is a good time to run away. Don't say I didn't warn you. I am James Sabata. I'm Don Guillory. And unfortunately, I have to be here. I'm Thomas Brungert. I thought you were going to communicate to us solely in farts. What's happened to that? Oh, oh. Uh, he didn't have enough beans. <laughs> oh, I must be going. Um, <laughs> it must have been that bean I had for dinner. It, if you haven't seen this episode and you're planning on watching it after we talk about it, don't. Just, Just don't. Just don't. I feel like we should go back to yesterday and leave uh, a message from future us saying, don't watch tomorrow's episode. I want to severely apologize to anyone who watched this because of us. I feel yeah. like I've brought some some downers into your life, and I'm so, so sorry. There's an opening segment that lasts 127 minutes too long. <laughs> and then... And then for some reason, 23 seasons into this show, they thought, I bet our people like fart jokes. Ugh. And then and then they took what could have been a good parody of Dexter and instead did what they do and went, hey, does anybody know what Dexter is? Yeah, close enough. Let's make that. And then and then there's that that third skit that I don't even. Yeah. Oi. <sighs> The, the, only thing I, day, everybody. the only thing I, the only thing I liked was the uh, part of that opening sequence was Homer as Dr. Manhattan. I liked that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I liked. And I oh, just, and I guess the uh, Martin Maggie costume with the, uh, from Alien, that was pretty right. funny. Yeah, that was pretty great. Maggie breaking out. That was a nice touch. This is all downhill after that. But like, well, there's yeah. also the psycho parody, too, where, you know, Homer's going to dispose of the candy or at least take the candy to the to donate to the troops so they know that we're having fun here back at home uh <laughs> which again so stupid it is great because uh that's that's honestly the stupid shit that people were going and anybody who thinks i'm bashing veterans i am one so i'm going to talk shit about us uh and talk about the military community and then everybody's uh empty platitudes and things like hey let's make them a care package with our halloween candy um whoa whoa whoa, set- whoa, whoa. let's settle down if you want to send us care packages of halloween candy please do no Done. no no us I, th- I yes. thought they were i thought they oh, were yeah. sending <laughs> us I, I thought they were sending suckers to suckers oh my god <laughs> uh, we're not I'm a political done. show at all <laughs> Go on, Don. <laughs> okay. No, it's just I, I love how the Simpsons again, even in the Halloween episode, they take their shots at stuff that people are uncomfortable taking shots. Which is, yeah, there is this kind of bullshit, uh, uh, um, empty platitude of the you know the thank you for your service or hey, here's my extra shit. Hope you enjoy it. I know it sucks over there in Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever the fuck you happen to be. Uh, here, have my fucking jujubes. By the way, I ate all the Reese's. <laughs> Wait, I was watching an episode of Hoarders, and like the woman's plan was to send all of her shitty furniture overseas to the troops, which I thought was fucking hilarious. And then I was just thinking about these troops in like Afghanistan in a shitty rocking chair they got from this bitch in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> But that's With a you. nice note that says, I hope you like my wicker. God bless you. God bless this wicker. Anyway, I'm stalling. I don't want to get into this. because it's Yeah, just, speaking of intros that were t- 127 minutes too long. This episode sucks. So, okay, so here's my issues with it from a writing point of view as well, okay? The payoff to this joke is Homer opening his fucking bag and there's fucking vegetables in it. Except if you watched it, there was never a time for anyone to switch it out. So am I supposed to believe that Homer had vegetables in there this entire fucking time? And then, <laughs> just because, <laughs> and then we have this fucking ridiculous fucking scene where Homer's going to bite his goddamn arm off and bites off the wrong arm. Now, 
Yeah, that's a pretty homerish joke. But they'll, they'll grow back, right? But I, yeah, but okay, I'm getting to the the problem I have with it. <laughs> so then, then he bites off his fucking leg because apparently he's too stupid to know a leg from an arm at this point. And and that's fine. That's a homerish joke. But then this motherfucker has them sewn back on. How the fuck did that happen? James, you're you're so thinking about this. this too deeply my friend you know what you know what unlike <laughs> everyone else i have to suffer through this more than anyone. i had to watch I this to... then i had to talk about it and now i have to edit it fuck this episode i have i have an look answer for you when, whenever there's something that you can't explain it was wizards yes God damn it <laughs> <sighs> all right first up all right so <laughs> in my my Wildest dreams. I did not expect us to get this fucking bad. And the worst part of it is, I feel like the end could have been semi-interesting as an episode instead. But no, no, I didn't get that. I got fart jokes. So Homer is decorating for Halloween, and a real spider is in his stuff, and he holds it up and he says... Ooh, it's a good thing this isn't a real spider because a real spider would blah, blah, blah. Because apparently they don't know that I understand the fucking joke without spelling it out for me. <sighs> Everything's wrong with this episode. So then Homer gets paralyzed and, and he can only communicate through farts. And that would be bad enough. But then he writes a super long love letter that's absolutely impossible for Homer to write through farts. <laughs> and 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 I I don't know what the fuck they were going for with this episode and I don't I don't understand how no one in the writers room had the balls to say we really shouldn't do this. <laughs> and then Homer's bitten by another spider but this one's actually radioactive giving him the powers of Spider-Man but he can only shoot webs out of his ass. So he's paralyzed shooting webs out of his ass swinging through the city, slamming into stuff. And this episode is so bad that I think that that's a better idea. And I would have rather seen that episode. You want to see web ass? (laughs) I would rather see web ass Pahomer. All right. Uh, Can I explain why I hated this episode? (laughs) Oh, please do. So this, this, first bit is called the diving bell and the butterball which already annoyed me because do you guys know the subject material that they were basing this on i do not i read it like 10 years ago but yeah yeah yeah. so it's this book and the book was made into a movie a french movie um it's called the diving bell and the butterfly and it's a beautiful story and the movie is a great movie and i'm guessing the movie came out the same year this did because it was probably topical the same way that at the end of the sketch they made a joke about spider-man turn off the dark which if you're young or just have no idea what goes on in Broadway, Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark was this terrible musical production just cursed with injuries and terrible wiring work. Um, it's a joke that doesn't hold up because it's so specific to one month that story was, you know, relevant. But uh, so in, in, in the story, or Diving Bill the Butterfly is a true story. It's about a guy who was paralyzed in a car crash and... He loses all movement in his body except for his eyelids, so he communicates by blinking, and his, you know, family or his nurse would just recite letters, and then he would blink when he wanted that letter to be written down, and he wrote a book that way, and he eventually passed away, and I guess they couldn't end the episode with Homer having one final fart and then dying. They ended up doing this ridiculous Spider-Man parody. But just the idea that they're going to take this French film or this story and turn it into, like, a a funny Halloween sketch is just so fucking bogus to me. Like it's such a terrible idea and they should have never done it. That's how I feel about it. I think what happened. And of course I'm just speculating here. Someone watched the movie or read the book and, and thought, Oh my gosh, what if Homer were realized? And then they ran out of things that they could actually do with it as opposed to, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, it, it, where, where, like James was saying, you could have made this a whole episode where kind of like the, the Homer dying episode early on in the in the show's run where, you know, he's had the fugu uh, and poisoning and, and thinks he's going to die. So he does all these things 
because he's expecting to die at sun uh, at sunrise. Um, the the spider <laughs> ass web ass thing, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, it's funny for the optics of it because he's still on a fucking dolly. Yeah. Of all things, because it, in all honesty, he doesn't need the dolly now that he's got the webs and stuff because he can shoot the web out of his hand and, and travel. And he can shoot the webs out of his ass to trap people or whatever he's going to do with them or to fight crime. But it's just it, it's funny visually for me because he still is attached to a dolly uh, in, in the same ridiculous pose when when he was paralyzed. Uh, but, yeah, this this definitely would have worked as something else. So two things. One, before I say this, I'm. I'm so sorry to anyone who is paralyzed or has family members who are or anything else, because what I'm about to say is bad. I would prefer an episode that was basically a bucket list where Homer was paralyzed and it was funny to see him do paralyzed, like try to do things while paralyzed. That would at least be way funnier to me than this farting nonsense. I still don't know that it would be hilarious, but it's a better idea. And two, and I am not going to edit this out of the episode. I don't know if you guys heard my cat, but before she left, because I kicked her out of the room, she fucking farted. (laughs) And I'm so angry right now. I feel like Matt Groening paid my cat to fart on me for hating this so much. (sighs) It's a... (laughs) Go back to this idea of a paralyzed bucket list. If you were paralyzed, what would be on your bucket list? Mm. Zip lining. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. I just, I just feel like Uh, that would, that would at least be a plot. Are we talking quadriplegic or paraplegic? Well, I mean, in this, he can't move at all other than his butt cheeks. So let's, it's, everything's the same. Hmm. I don't I, I don't know what the sensations are as far as if you would still feel things like if if like if you go on a roller coaster, you can feel the movement, you can feel, you know, the, the drops and the G force and stuff like that. Or I don't, I don't know what would qualify as something I would want to do in that state. So I, yeah. I have no idea. Hmm. I mean, if it's like, oh, well, you won't feel anything, you'll just. It, it'll it'll be like you're watching it through your TV. Then I just I'd go skydiving. You know, if, it, if it's one of those things where it's gonna feel <laughs> like you're, you know. But what if that's why yes, you're paralyzed? It would be tandem. Do what? Ah. What if that's the reason you're paralyzed? Well, I'm telling you right now, it's not gonna be because I'm not jumping out of any fucking planes. Uh, so <laughs> that would be the the bucket list. Like, here's something I would not do under normal circumstances. Uh, but now that I've been bitten by, you know, a, a spider or whatever the the, the circumstances are, uh, yeah. So should we move on to Dial D for Diddly? Yeah, yeah, we should. All right, we should never ever uh, speak about this again. <laughs> by the way, James, what letter was she trying to communicate to you when she? Left out of the room and farted whatever the stinkiest, <laughs> longest lasting <laughs> fucking letter is. Oh, okay. All right. I believe uh, there dial- was an F and a U. She was <laughs> dialing D for Diddley. Hey. Uh, yeah. So it, anyway, dial D for uh. Diddley. This 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 sketch on this episode is uh, obviously a parody of Dexter. For those of you who don't know, Dexter it was a Showtime series uh, that, that followed the life of Dexter Morgan, a uh, a. A blood spatter analyst, not to be confused with blood splatter, but blood spatter analyst uh, and and, uh, forensic investigator. Uh, He worked for Miami Metro. He was also a serial killer because he figured if he had an addiction to doing something like this, uh, the best thing he should do is go ahead and rid the world of of bad people. Uh, Ned Flanders is a good choice for this. Uh, considering, you know, his, his ideas about religion, his ideas about good and bad. Uh, but the, the this part of the episode itself, it's Ned Flanders taking the role of Dexter, or the behaviors of Dexter, feeling as though he's cleansing Springfield uh, and and uh, 
enacting God's will uh, by killing bad people or, or people that are doing bad things uh, because God is speaking to him. Turns out it's Homer who is hacked into his talking Bible and is telling Ned to kill all these people that are an inconvenience to him. Ned finds out, gets into a fight with Homer. Homer then threatens to burn the Bible. God cu- comes down and kills Homer. And uh, then the devil shows up, who is now married to, to Maud Flanders, uh, and basically uh, bullies God. And that's it. So... <laughs> Can I just start by saying that I feel like there are seasons of Dexter that are funnier than this episode? You know, I feel like, like there's even... no good jokes in this episode, in this, in this skit. There's like, well, it's, it's really lacking in jokes and I don't understand why. They even do the whole, there, there are two good jokes at work. Oh yeah. There are two good jokes at work and it confused my kid as we were watching it because there's one where, you know, God talks about, Oh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble with the the big guy. And they were like, "Who are you talking about?" And he was talking about the devil. And the devil basically pops up and tells God to give him coffee. And of course, coffee's not you know hot enough, so he eats it up. And it turns out that that Maud has been in hell all this time, uh, having sex with the devil. Which again. Those two things work, and it's funny because uh, of Ned's insecurities with respect to religion and this whole idea that he has to do all these things right, and it turns out that, you know, fuck it, he is right as he's tried to be. Uh, things didn't go so well for his, his dearly departed wife. I just liked that God says Satan is running the place. Yeah. Like, that makes everything make so much sense. <laughs> I really agree with that line. I don't know that it's funny, but I, I do feel like it affected me on a deep spiritual level. <laughs> Did you notice that God had five fingers? <laughs> wow, he's better than everyone. Amazing. I think that's that's Simpsons wide. Every time God's there, he always has five fingers. Huh. So yeah, a fun little. I, 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 yeah. Oh no, I was just gonna say. Here's the point where I'm probably gonna piss off some of our more religiously inclined listeners oh here we go uh but i always found it funny especially in this episode but i always found it funny when people talk about murder and uh uh all these different violent acts that the humans humans participate in um my friends and family who are ultra religious uh will talk about needing jesus or needing god or or you know speaking about you know just you need more religion right is is what they're trying to sell me on. And I then tell them, why would you sell me on something that's so full of blood, death, and destruction? And they're like, what do you mean? Didn't God kill all of humanity with a fucking flood? Well, you know, that was to get rid of the bad. So what you're saying is, if people aren't good enough, God will just kill them? I'm like, what? They say, well, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, they weren't necessarily behaving the right way. I was like, well, what's the right way? I thought God gave us free will. So I like, I, I thought it was funny that Homer gets killed by God, and it's kind of like, it, it's it's just kind of brushed over. Like, he chokes him to death. He's the father. <laughs> That's what fathers but he's not do the on big man. And is it really that bad that Maud's fucking Satan? Like, isn't isn't Ned Satan? So what's the problem here? Every other well, episode, Ned's been Satan. I feel like maybe she was just confused. Well, Satan's just taking the form of Ned in those episodes, so you know it's it's he's a little bit more uh, pleasant, I guess, as opposed to the cloven hoofed guy that is described. Man. But I, I I think there was a lot more they could have done with this. If it had been the entire uh, uh, piece was Ned going around killing people because he's reading the Bible and it's saying that stuff, that would have been great. But Homer playing a prank on him, it's like it it just seems too 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 expected and too predictable that it would be Homer talking to him through the Bible. Wait, would it have been better if Ned was killing everybody by farting? 
I will hang up and stop recording right now. <laughs> I, I do have an issue with that, actually. I know there's a little voice changer, but I still feel like Ned would know. Like, he's used to Homer pranking him. He mm-hmm. talks to Homer all the fucking time. And and Ned's smart enough that he would realize everyone being targeted. Like It's not like he just says Patty and Selma. He's like... Remember that guy that cut Homer off in traffic? Like he's pointing to Homer. I just I feel like Ned's smarter than this. I don't know. <sighs> I'm trying too hard. I know. Uh, do I have to talk about this last one? Because I yes, you do. Uh, okay, yes. well I'm gonna I'm gonna make it real quick. <laughs> uh, the third sketch is called in the Navi Navy. How is it pronounced, Don? I don't Navi. speak. Nerd. I, I don't speak nerd. Okay, Navi. <laughs> in the uh. Navi. Anyway, it's a stupid Avatar parody, and it was dumb. And the thing that really disturbed me about it is we have to watch Bart have sex, and he's 10 years old, and it felt like alien child porn. The end. Yeah, no, I agree. I I completely agree with all of that. Um, The only thing I would add is we we finally got to see, what is it, Rigel 7, or wherever they live? That was something. But, yeah, eh. (laughs) <laughs> well, there was, was the discussion about alien genitalia on this one. It didn't save it, Don. It wasn't. It wasn't worthwhile. <laughs> they didn't do it well enough. It was just. Well, they said they were uh, going to what connect their testicles. Don't you mean tentacles? No. You know I what said, happened? Uh, they the writers' room just watched the Golden Globes and they're like, "What's nominated? Oh, Guiding Bell and the Butterfly." Oh, Dexter's nominated. Oh, and Avatar. Let's just fucking write parodies of all three of those and everybody will love it. Here's some stuff that did, I guess, age well, not not intentionally, but uh, whenever the, the series that or movies that, that talk about the future or, you know, almost a, re- a reflection of whatever's going on. So you got. Um, oh, my gosh, the, the, the one with Sylvester Stallone. Anyway, uh, uh, you've Rambo? got <laughs> no. God damn it! I couldn't remember it all of a sudden. But you've got Time Cop. You have um, Demolition Man. You've got all these films that that, or or even TV shows that talk about alternate realities and alternate futures and stuff. And they often talk about. I remember this specifically. This one line in Time Cop when they were listening to radio was like, "Oh." The American White Supremacist Party uh, nominated blah, 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 blah t- for, for the presidency. And even as, when I saw the 90s, I was like, God, I hope we never get to that point. Uh, now, you know, they just hide in plain sight. Um, but there's a line that Krusty delivers where it says, you know, hey, we need to hurry this up because I've got a not- Nazi party rally to go to. Oh, yeah, they're back. And just thinking about this episode that was done in, in 2011 and where we are in 2020, that, uh, you know, that, that wasn't too far off. That, and, and, and wait, so James, you haven't seen Avatar, right? Nope. Now, Thomas, you have or haven't? Uh, unfortunately, I have seen it. Uh, okay. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a, okay sci-fi movie the the big thing about it was the technology and the effects and things like that the story is very basic it's very i don't even want to say there's a story like there was more depth to the titanic than there was to 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 uh avatar but one of the things that they get into again it tells you about how deep the story wasn't they're looking for this mineral called unobtainium. <laughs> Which, Good lord. Again, yeah, that's that's the level of thought that would, this unobtainium. It's it's so. So you're rare. saying this is a pretty accurate representation here? Oh, everything. In fact, the 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 quote unquote the blind man from um from Don't Breathe is the main villain or one of the main villains in uh, in Avatar. He just plays like this hardcore space marine uh, who's hell bent on doing the, whatever the corporation's will is to get these minerals. Uh, but it involves slaughtering a planet of people and, and uh, taking resources away from them. So, I mean, the parody of it was okay. And it would have really fit more. 
I, I think this episode, or even the deeper diddly one, uh, th- these parts of the episode would have fitted if they, if this was another one of the the moments where they get distracted or they get stuck somewhere and they have to tell a story, or like with uh, Family Guy where the power went out, so they started telling Star Wars. Um, I don't know. I mean, the the, the good thing about this is that you again have uh, the co- uh, continuity or the, the the continuous appearance of Kang and Kodos in it. Uh, but there's really nothing about this episode or this part of the episode, the episode in general, that really, uh, if, if this was like your entry into the Simpsons Halloween uh, specials, it wouldn't do much for you. And I think that yeah. was kind of the spectacle with it was, you know, hey, Avatar just came out last year or whatever. It's like, oh, this would be a good one to parody. Oh, my gosh. I wonder how the Simpsons are going to do it. You know, kind of like we talked about in a previous episode where, you know, what are we expecting going forward as far as the parodies and things that, that are going to be discussed? And I think this was one of those things uh, uh, that that came up, which was how are they going to capture this? What are they going to do? Well, I will say that having seen Avatar, um, the acting in the Simpsons episode is much better. Yes. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I just. I was one of those people who saw Avatar like, whatever week fifty two of its run after everybody in the whole world told me I have to <laughs> see this movie. So already I was set up for failure because I never want to like a movie everybody tells me to like. But also I just felt like it was really long and just like any James Cameron movie. There's just too much exposition and like I get it. He's paralyzed and he needs to be an alien. Whatever. Like it doesn't matter to me and. This episode didn't matter to me, and I never want to see it or talk about it again. This concludes another episode of the Necronomic.com with Jim Savada, Don Guillory, and Thomas Setzbach Brunner.